so um, in some ways and I'm sorry I'm going to keep dialing you back to yeah. last year it felt a little bit square peg around hole with Pace and Space and Randy and that group that was so dedicated to not doing that for like three years did, is that yeah, would you yeah. say that's fair or do you yeah, think it was I would say something it's else? fair in the sense where you just the game's evolved so mm -hmm. sometimes players have to evolve and if they're not evolving in that game it's really so like Humphreys is more of a center now Ning mm -hmm. is more of a center now right. Ning is, so that's something that they just had I, I was lucky enough where I started doing it for like five games in LA and then when Jabari got hurt I just transitioned to that right right in time of the curve where right. basically I wanted to start getting going so I was lucky in the sense of that but I, I just think of last year I mean uh, we were trying to we were trying to get a flow to a rhythm and stuff like that. Uh, luckily, John was healthy. You know, Gortat missed game. You miss games. You, you can't have your key guys miss when you when you when you when you don't have enough talent of other teams. They got you got to have the chemistry, which we were kind of somewhat lacking and stuff like that. I thought overall it wasn't a successful season, but it was a good season for me just to see that. For me, another year of the stretch for helping out playing with guys like John. I even struggled with the second year. We, we, we had you know guys. You, you, you want to play fast, but you got to play smart and team, and that's what we're trying to teach here. In the same way, we're trying to play fast, but just because you play fast doesn't mean everyone has the freedom to do what they want, and that's where you got to have self-discipline, and that's something that we lacked last year. There's lots of reasons to end yeah. up in different spots. Was it more of that you weren't looking to come back here? Was it more that you were kind of interested in going back to Phoenix? I, I, I think that it's fair to say that at the Wizards at that time had plan A, plan B, plan C, and I wasn't in that the, those three. Just now, I might have been like a fallback plan type. And for me was, I was going in the free agency trying to sign early. I wasn't waiting for anyone. They called me that first night and they said, we'll see how it plays out. But overall, they were never in consideration where offers being, they were going after Duran and Horford and how that. And at that time, I had three good offers from Utah, Brooklyn, and Phoenix. So once it got to that, it was really more about comfortable with my family, the dollar amount going in. So it, uh, if anything, I, I might owe Ernie uh, whatever favorite bottle of wine for taking me and helping me to get in this situation to play with John. And so, you know, to show everyone what I could do with that for. And, and overall, coming off back surgery, no one knew what to expect. And I thought I, I played pretty well for the most part. You were, you were such a leader on the team mm -hmm. last year. Uh, you know, the Wizards maybe don't have your personality or Nene has gone. What, what do you think? The guys you've been around on the team they have now, who do you think kind of fills that role for them? Team probably uh, Mihini, probably. You know, someone you got to be around. You got to have someone that, for one, is professional, that does everything the professional way. So people, when they look at it, respect it, knowing that he's coming from a good place. That's for one. And then for two, you know, uh, you know, you, you don't always have to be a vocal leader, but you need at least one on the team. Where when someone talks, you know, you, like, you, like I'm saying, you know, they're coming for a good place in the sense of giving you the right direction. Because it's, it's, you know, it's hard to call out John or Brad at different times. Well, hey, you know what? Because they're playing 40 minutes. I know they're tired. They don't make a mistake. But at the same time, there's. The reason why those are max guys who you expect and you, you try to harp on that. But uh, for that team, I'm not really sure how, how it would be. And that's something that maybe starts with Scotty Brooks. But overall, usually that's formed in. So you would hope it would be John and Brad taking that, those two roles. I know John was doing that, and Brad was trying to last year, but injuries hurt that. What was, what's your view of their relationship? I, thought, I think it's a working relationship in the sense of um, when they're on the court, I, I think they have a, a, a respect that matter for them. But it's difficult when you have two stars trying to both come into their prime. And obviously John's ahead of the curve when he's already been an all-star, but Brad's trying to develop his game. And for him to develop his game, he needs to be more of a ball handler, more of a playmaker, more of that. And that takes a little away from John. But I don't think it's where... I'm better than you, but I don't think it's as negative that people think it's like that. I think it's a mutual respect where you have two young guys trying to grow at the same time. And sometimes you'll butt heads, but overall, um, we gamble over playing together, we went to dinners together, so it's no hate or any animosity towards us too. Do you think that tension contributed to the struggles last year? No, I mean, because the, the tension, it wasn't tension in the sense of like, not liking each other. I just think that they both were trying to grow. So on the courts, you, you could see that, you know, obviously Brad was trying to work on certain things and, and it's difficult where on that, in that type of system, you space the floor, the ball's going to be in John's hand majority of the time. Cool. Thanks, cool. Thanks, Thanks, John. John.